Hello and welcome to another episode of Natural Balance. This is where body, mind, and spirit connect. I'm really excited for you to meet today Michelle Casta, who is a quantum success coach. She helps people in the business world clear their thinking. And so we also take that into our personal lives. So I'm really excited to have you on, Michelle. Welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Yes, it's lovely to have you. Can you share with the viewers a little bit about yourself and if you have a backstory, because that's always what we all want to know about how to shift and change in our lives. Yeah. Well, without telling you the whole story, some highlights that are related to our topic today and to being in balance was that I was an indigo child and um, grew, up, grew up an only child and was very highly sensitive. Um, I also overcame some emotional abuse as part of my journey. And really, that's how I first discovered that I really had a pretty strong saboteur running my life. And <laughs> set out to nurture her, heal her, um, work with her, bring her on board with my higher purpose, which I knew that I had because I have a very strong spirit and a um, just so I had a lot of clarity from the higher self, but the lower self, that little inner girl, you know, was like, hey, what about me? Mm -hmm. And so that's part of my story. And I've spent, a, you know, quite a few years in different modalities um, working with this. But even it's interesting because, you know, how sometimes our, per, our personality or our soul knows something before our personality does, Mia? Yes. When I first started coaching, one of the first techniques I ever learned was bringing that saboteur on board. And so every single client from day one, I've always done a sab saboteur I would call it now a healing session, but brought that part on board so that when we were doing the coaching, it would totally work, right? Mm -hmm. And so a part of me knew that this was a very um, important part of staying in balance and having my life be successful, even before I knew that it was actually really sort of running me all along. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little bit about my story. It's interesting how the saboteur controls us. You know, the inner child, the saboteur, the inner critic. Um, and, and a lot of people don't understand this. And so I love that you brought that up because my saboteur also <laughs> controls my life, you know, right. almost to almost to the end. Um, well, actually, it was to the end till I stepped forward and said, no more. So why don't you share a little bit about the inner saboteur? You know, the inner saboteur is the part of us that's really was developed out of fear and trying to keep itself protected. It, um, more than likely, I mean, we all have it. There's not a person on the planet that doesn't have at least one, so, and sometimes multiples. But, but usually it's that inner wounded child part of us that actually has so much power and so much authority <laughs> that we don't even realize. And really it's just trying to keep us protected, and it's often – sort of doing it the opposite it's like it, it's like it, it kind of undermines us without us really knowing it and so we may say we want x but then the saboteur is like behind the scenes kind of blocking our progress and doing things to trip us up that make logical sense you know we might get a headache we might i mean there's a million different ways it kind of um can show itself but a lot of times it's that inner um, talk inside our head that really kind of is mean sort of to us when you really start to pay attention to what it's saying and what it's doing. So it's a hidden part of ourselves that really just needs love is what I would say. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's about um, connecting to that inner being, that inner little child and loving and healing it, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that was so surprising to me is I had done a lot of inner work, um, but we can do a lot of inner work from the head. This is about really going into the heart and going into the body and going into the dungeon of because a lot of times if you had abuse like I had abuse, that little girl was in a corner. Right. And she and she was just like, y'all leave me alone. I don't know if it's safe. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes it can be a very hidden part of us, so, you know, until we really start looking with loving eyes and with kindness, um, you know, it, it'll stay locked away. And a lot of times, like you said, people aren't aware that that's the part that's running their lives and that's getting them the results that they that they really kind of don't want, which absolutely puts people out of balance. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So so let's talk about um, 
how it impacts our sense of peace and balance and success, both in our personal and our career. Yes. Um, the biggest part is that it because it does undermine us, we can feel kind of like in conflict with ourselves. You know, because one part of us is saying this, and then the other part that's hidden isn't saying anything but doing a bunch of stuff, and it's like clashing. Yes. So that's disharmonious right there. So whenever we're in any inner conflict with any part of ourselves, and that's why I actually do a lot of parts work with my clients, is like bringing all parts on board so that we are aligned, you know, and working together versus like this and that, <laughs> and sort of all out of balance like that. It's like we come together into harmony and we learn to kind of move forward from that place. Um, so that's that's the biggest piece right there is that, you know, psychologically it can affect, you know, how we feel, our self-esteem, um, certainly our results in terms of really making momentum. A lot of times you know your saboteur is active if you keep trying and it's not working. <laughs> it's like, and you've tried this and you've tried that and you're like, but what's going on? And sometimes there's other things, there's like, we don't want to get too out there, but energies and entities and other things that kind of come into play. But all of it has to do with the way that you feel about yourself. And that is why doing the inner peace work and the inner transformation work is so important because when you levy yourself up to a place of self-love, which you talk so much about, Mia, those aspects don't stand as much of a chance against the love. Right. Right. And so the love can actually transform that. And that is what I have learned through, through my journey. Absolutely. And the love is what peace and the joy and the balance is and the harmony. It's beautiful. It really does change our existence. And when we do this self growth, self discovery work, doesn't it? Yes, it, it does. Really does. It, it does. changes the structure of who we are. And what I found is that it literally raises that emotional intelligent level within us. So we're not operating in the the way in which we developed. You know, we're restructuring who we are, how we handle people, and how we handle each experience, how we handle our, our love life, our relationships, our family life, our business, our connections with others. It really is beautiful. I'm glad you do this work. Yeah. yeah, it takes practice, um, but it's like it's our internal reset that is in our internal thoughts and feelings are creating our reality. So, of course, when we're willing to be brave enough, to go inside and have a look and go, wow, is this part of me really, um, have I outgrown her? Does she need to sort of, and it's emotional maturity. Mm -hmm. Emotional yes. intelligence is growing up out of the child or the, or the inner teenager, right? I have an inner teenager that, well, she's pretty fun <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, but sometimes she doesn't need to be coming out, you know, in right. certain instances. And so just all of it really is like, being in relationship with yourself. To me, that's what the spiritual journey is. It's learning who you are, how you operate, and then getting to choose, hey, my default tends to be this, but guess what? I have a choice, and maybe I'm going to choose this way. Yeah. And doing that more and more consistently until you start going, wow, I'm in a new groove, and it feels actually a lot better than that old groove. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So can you share with us some uh, methods? I know you do a lot of energetic work, but that can connect us and, and remove yeah. that saboteur. Yeah. Um, the way that I typically work with the inner saboteur is I actually have a process called um, fire your inner saboteur and hire your inner rock star, right? And so <laughs> sometimes the part of us actually needs a new job description. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that there's nothing wrong there's nothing to judge in this part of us all parts of us are lovable acceptable and and need to be embraced um so what i do is i give that part a different job in the in the psyche the way that it, that we are operating because there's parts um like being discerning or, or watching out to make sure you're making smart moves those are parts that that part typically is very good because it tends to be vigilant it, it tends to you know not want to get you in trouble or put you down a path that's going to hurt you. So, but it's usually doing it from a fear-based place. And what I found is that if we can move it out of the head and into the heart, and actually that's the energetic shift that I do with people, and then it can actually be in a new office, so it can actually give its gifts from a place of wisdom and love and compassion, it actually 
helps us to be more effective with our purpose and with our success and living in life and our balance. Um, but it's coming from the right location. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we cast it out or make it wrong or anything like that. It's, it's always bringing it more into our heart and more into our being and giving it something to do that it's naturally good at. That's the way I handle it. Very nice. That's one it, of the ways. It really, big it really is wonderful when we find that peace when we do this work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It just yeah. changes the, the feel of our life and our experience. And people who watch this, many of them will be saying, but I'm not at that place, I don't understand. So we're saying, come on, hop on over, right? Enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and the first thing, and this is an easy one, Mia, too, for anyone out there that maybe doesn't want to do all that, they could actually just journal or get to talk with that part of them. You know, when let's say you have an episode where you feel like you got too emotionally reactive. That's a pretty good sign your saboteur mm -hmm. um, hijacked you. Um, write out what happened and then, you know, give that part of you, hey, honey, what, what do you, what's the name that you want to be called? And actually start giving that part of yourself a name, too. A lot of times it's your, you know, it's your childhood name. Um, or a lot of times it's also a funny name, like, um, like Oscar or, you know, usually like these little monster things, <laughs> which is also fun because it makes it like befriending. And that's why I think I've titled the show. I wanted to call it befriend your inner saboteur because we want to befriend this aspect of ourselves. And part of that is putting a name to it, saying, Hey, how you doing? You know, mm -hmm. nice to meet you. And how can we work together better so that our life is actually more successful, peaceful and happy? Which is really amazing because when we do connect to that part, really then it does not become the running factor. And we really re-raise our inner experience, our inner child of who we are, which helps support our adult child. So it really does blend beautifully together. It's beautiful. And you talk about the different saboteur ploys. So you want to share that with us? Yeah. A lot of the saboteur, besides acting out or getting sick or having headaches, things like that, um, often it's the critical voices in our head. And I've identified three that probably anyone out there could say, hey, I, I've got that one. The first is the bully, and that's that inner mean girl or inner mean boy that, you know, just basically tells you you're not good enough or kind of berates you, you know, with the inner self-talk. You know, how did you do that? That was so silly. That kind of thing. And then you've, you've got the other one that's um, similar, and everybody has these, is the judge, right? So you did this right, you did that wrong, you know, everything's, you know, black or white and just kind of real judge-like and not a lot of acceptance there. And then another one, you know, I've seen a lot of powerful people, and women in particular, love this one. It's the confused, like, oh, I don't know what to do, right? When they actually do... But the saboteur will say, well, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I should do this or if I should do that. So that confusion, you know, that haziness, that lack of clarity is an often, you know, um, a clue that your saboteur is the one doing the thinking. And the other question that I often ask my clients when we're doing sort of that initial assessment of getting to know it and befriend it is, you know, if you were to give yourself, you know, a percentage of how much life force this part of you is, is actually consuming, Zero to 100 percent. You know, I think the one lady that had probably the biggest saboteur, and, I, and I've had a few, but hers was like 95 percent of her life force. This part of her was running her life. And, you know, when they put a number to it and they start to recognize, that's when the awareness and the shifting and the transformation can happen because, it's, it's, wow, it's like a huge light bulb. And then, um, and then they get to say, oh, wow, I really have been using confusion. Um, as an escape to not really own my power or make this change, and then they can start that process of transformation from there. You know, it's, it's amazing because the what comes out of us from our childhood can be so damaging at times. But mm -hmm. when we step up and, as you say, befriend it, look at it, feel it, examine it, love it, write it out, talk to it, and most people watching might go, that's really kind of strange. But really, that's, <laughs> that's the beginning of the shifts, right? So if yeah. we could put it in the form of where somebody else might, where some people who don't understand this might be able to understand it, where briefly say it's like dieting, you know, the food thing. 
that's also a saboteur. We, we can um, possibly be take, eating the wrong stuff for our body because we're thinking that we want this comfort stuff. That's what our saboteur is telling us. But really, we're not the ones in control saying, okay, so that has way too much sugar. It's not good for me. I need some maybe more high vibrational vegetables or something like that. So when you can see what you're doing with yourself in that respect, we're doing it in every respect, aren't we, Michelle? In every area until we don't. That is so true. That is absolutely true. And that's a good example of just a real basic thing of, you know, how we can be choosing that's not for our best interest. And that basically is the bottom line, is when, you're, when you've befriended your saboteur and you guys are working together like a family or best friends, you're ch making choices that you know are right for you. And you're actually bringing in that, that part of you that does know who you are and what's right and, and what's not right, and you're choosing more often than not the thing that actually is good for you. Yep. I love to see the the realizations you know people say well you've been working on yourself all these years well of course you know but i still just like everybody else i still go through stuff you know we all have our moments it doesn't mean just because we're aware of this and we're growing and we begin to love this journey of shifting and changing who we once were into who we want to become doesn't mean that it's going to be the easiest ride and it also doesn't mean that we still won't have things come up, but the glorious thing is, is that they won't last as long. We know how to shift out of them and into a different space. And that's what's so important, isn't it, Michelle, for people to understand that they're not stuck, they're not alone, and they can't, and they can't shift. Do you want to talk a little yeah. bit about that? Yeah, and that's what brings us back to balance, is when we know those things. And sometimes we forget when we're triggered, you know, and usually when we're going to another level or we need to make a major change, th that internal saboteur is like a default setting. It's usually mm -hmm. going to get activated, right? But now we know who it is. We're like, oh, she's knocking at the door. No, she's <laughs> kicking the door down today. No, don't come <laughs> in. <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's don't having a little outside. tantrum. <laughs> it's fine. It's like, oh, my God, Shelly, look at you go. You just go, girl. And, and you just approach her like, so much better and it takes practice because it's basically loving yourself and if we have been taught to love ourselves you know and i hope many of you out there that are parents that are teaching your kids to love yourself you know because those of us that didn't have that as a basic foundation that is something you would think would be so simple to learn but it takes a lot of practice to keep giving the stuff yourself the love when you do make a mistake or you do something kind of silly um you know which happens to me still like and i'm like how did that happen but now i can laugh and appreciate that it's also part of me and um you know and just i i heard one of my mentors say and i love saying it is that part needs more love not less mm -hmm. and that's if we could just take that as a philosophy that would really um accelerate your process and it can be easier because you can go oh i can just love just love just love just love and love can be such a foreign feeling a foreign concept sorry we've got some trucks going by the office here um, such a foreign feeling such a foreign concept such a foreign identity within ourselves but those of us um, who have struggled when we were younger to, to discover that to step out of that you know I say I'm a, um, an extroverted introvert because I am absolutely an introvert but when people see me I'm like ah! you know because I'm comfortable with with the area that I'm speaking in. So when you identify that love and when you can break through and allow it within yourself, it's this really peaceful, comfortable feeling. And that's what getting a hold of the saboteur is all about, isn't it? It's the peacefulness. It is, and that's the greatest balance that you could ask for, is is because that's your center and that's living from all of your parts are welcome, all of your parts are embraced then you can go out into the world um, feeling more centered and more balanced automatically. So I think it's a huge part of staying balanced and having that inner peace. That's wonderful. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more, but I know that you have a free gift, and so I wanted to know if you would share a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So my gift is called the Activate Your Destiny Success Kit, and it's actually the full book of my best-selling book, The Destiny Discovery. 
which kind of outlines the six stages that you go through when you're awakening to your purpose and stepping into your purpose. Mm -hmm. And then I'm a real big believer in going within and getting quiet. So it comes with some companion um, meditations to help you get some clues and insights into your next best steps so that you can instantly, you know, get into action with your purpose and make, make those changes. So, Beautiful. yeah. That's a lovely, lovely gift. Thank you. Now, energy um, is who we are and what we experience, mm -hmm. negative, positive, um, everything. Mm -hmm. I know you do a lot of um, energetic processes, and I know that in your meditational stuff, there's obviously the energetic shifts in there. Can you share with us? I know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Can you share with us maybe a little tiny process that before we close out that could support people to understand the beautiful work that you do? Yeah. You know, what wants to be felt. All right. So everybody just take a nice deep breath and come into your heart. And as you breathe, you breathe in peace, and you breathe out anything less than peace. And as you look into your heart, I want you to imagine that there's a an inner child in, inside your heart. She might be sitting, or maybe she's in a meadow. She might be in a room. But find that inner child right now, and invite her to come and just... Have a little conversation with you. And it feels like everybody's willing to at least connect. So thank that part of you for being willing to come and be close. And all I want you to do with her is just say, hello, sweet thing. I'm so thankful that you and me are on this journey together. I'm so thankful and I love that we've been through so many rough times and amazing times and that we've always had each other. And I want to thank you for your bravery. I want to thank you for, for hanging in through all the thick and the thin. And I want to promise you that moving forward, we're going to be in closer contact and I'm really going to find out what you need and want more and more every day. Mm -hmm. And Please come along with me on this next level journey that we're about to go through. As we all go through this eclipse season, shifts are happening, things are opening up where we can live in more peace and more balance. And we all just ask our inner children to come along down this new path that is golden, that is peaceful, that is prosperous, and that is empowered. Everybody take a nice deep breath. Spend a little more time with that little inner child. Maybe have a conversation or ask her one one or two more things in silence. And as we all just end by saying the one thing that we most needed to hear while we were growing up, say that to her or him right now. Let yourself receive those words of affirmation, those words of love, those words of feeling seen and feeling safe. And do whatever you need to do to say goodbye to this part of you. Tell her or him that you'll be back later. And then come back to the present moment. Shrug your shoulders. Just sending a little love and peace. That was so sweet. This is to our little first, children. This is one of the first times that I um, I chose the Sunshine Meadow, <laughs> and she was so excited to see me. <laughs> it was really cool because I do um, and have done for years and my clients do this inner child process. And so it literally is about restructuring that love, you know, changing the energies of your story. And so this is one of the first time where she's like cross like leaning towards me in excitement, you know, it was like, yay. And for those of you who haven't experienced it, we really do get a stillness and a peacefulness when we, when we go in and we love heal 
we change mm -hmm. that. So thank you so much for that. That was a very exciting thing for me to witness. I love that. Wonderful. Yeah. So it was wonderful to have you on. I'm so grateful you were here. Would you like to leave us with one last thought? Oh, yes. Uh, my, my last thought for everyone is that all of you, every part, the light, the dark, the spiritual, the, um, the little inner, the little inner child, they're all beautiful and valuable. And to remember to shine your light now more than ever because the world really does need your light. And we're getting ready to come into some pretty interesting times. So I just want to kind of like activate everybody with courageous hearts and just be, feel free to be who you are because that's what the world most needs right now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us. Thank you, Mia. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. And we'll see you in another episode of Natural Power.